Hello everyone. Tonight I'm going to be using Perplexity AI for the very first time. For those of you who do not know what Perplexity is, it is a conversational search engine that uses LLMs to help with the search query. Now you can think of this as a competitor to Google or more recently ChatGPT search that I demoed about a week ago or so where ChatGPT is used to provide me sources to um, links and whatnot. And so I have gone ahead and I've gotten the pro version of Perplexity and I um, have just been looking at the different settings. So you can use a bunch of different AI models here. Uh, I, I think I'll just go with Claude Sonnet 3.5 to start. And I also have just noticed that there's a lot more to this desktop app, which I'm using because I, I'm not using the web browser. I just realized they came out with their desktop app not that long ago, so I'm testing that out too. And I've noticed that there are pages like Discovery and gives you a bunch of interesting articles that you, you might be interested in. And so Library Think is probably where you have your conversational history. So let's go ahead and start using this for the very first time. I see that you have voice, focus, attach, uh, so let's. Uh, oh, I don't know what I don't even know what focus does, but I'll go with academic perhaps because I'm going to ask it similar questions as I did in the video where I was using ChatGPT search. So those of you who don't know, I did my PhD on um, black holes. This is one of the papers that I wrote, and I think I'm going to be asking questions regarding this area of research just because I know it well, and I'll be able to validate or invalidate the responses by perplexity if it's. Uh, truthful or if it's being accurate or not. So first things first, let's say I want to find papers between the years, I'll say 2013 and 2023, that are focused on black hole mass measurements with ALMA and HST. So let's go ahead and do that, this 10 year period. I have a pretty good idea of what those papers should be. Okay, so, oh wow. Okay, it says a groundbreaking study for NGC 3258. This was actually written by the person who got their PhD in the group before I did. So yes, this is a very well-known paper in the field. They just gave me one though. They just gave me one. Huh, interesting. So they just gave me one paper. I mean, that's a really good paper to cite, but that's not the, the only one that happened in the past 10 years. Okay, actually let's go with what challenges because this was actually one of the last sections of my own dissertation. So I want to see what it comes up with for challenges. Ooh, a bunch of archive links. Okay, cool. Sphere of influence resolution, that's true. Dust extinction is definitely an effect that I accounted for a lot in my models. Gas distribution issues, central holes. Is this my paper? because this, this sounds a lot like the 6861 paper that I wrote. Uh, let's see here. What's the first link? Oh, <laughs> it is my paper. Okay, nice, nice. Challenges with the methodology. Uh, Gas-based methods tend to provide lower black hole masses compared to stellar-based methods. Okay, which paper references this? Oh, okay, yes, I know this paper. This is a good one. Measurements can vary up to a factor of three between different techniques. This is Ben's, but I'm also on this paper as well. Okay, interesting. So, so far, so good. These are all good sources and I'm definitely not biased whatsoever. Happy to know that my, my papers are, are, are coming up in this search. So, so far, so good. These are, these are correct. All of these different uh, considerations here and the, the factors that it is citing. So it seems to me that it is definitely taking a look at the links that it is retrieving and it is giving uh, a basic summary of what those papers are finding. So really, really cool. I like how they have these different related questions here because these are kind of related research questions that uh, you might be asked as a scientist in terms of how these effects would come into your measurements. So I'm gonna be very curious to know how they answer this. So inclination affects how much of the velocity you can see along the line of sight. And so let's take a look as to what it says. Oh, it says here, the search results don't contain relevant information about the topic. The provided results discuss this, this, this. To properly answer this question, we need search results containing information about these things. So this is pretty interesting because this is not like ChatGPT, I think, where ChatGPT could perhaps 
just start making stuff up, even if it's not entirely sure. But here, it actually just says, I can't give you a very specific answer. This is what I was able to find. And these are you know, ways that you could answer this question. I actually like it when it admits that it doesn't have a straight answer for me, because I think for something like ChatGPT, I've definitely run into situations in the past where it just will make something up, like make up a source or maybe uh, come up with a very plausible sounding explanation that's not actually correct. So I think that is a really good feature of perplexity in the sense that it's actually trying to find sources that specifically address the prompt you give it. Okay, so now I really want to try and use the voice feature. Now, I don't know how this is gonna work. I think I'll just hit voice and I guess I'll just ask it a question. Uh, let's see, what's a question that I could ask it? Hi, can you tell me who founded Perplexity AI? Perplexity AI was founded in 2022 by a team of four co-founders, Aravind Srinivas, Andy Konwinski, Dennis Yaritz, and Johnny Ho. Each founder brought a unique set of skills and experiences to the company. Aravind Srinivas serves as the CEO and has a background as an AI researcher at OpenAI. He also oh, really? holds a PhD in computer science from UC Berkeley. Oh, Dennis cool. Yaritz. Okay, well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Oop, I'm talking into it. Don't want to talk into it more. Um, let's see. Okay, so that was a very basic question. Let's see if I can ask it a maybe more niche question in astrophysics. What are some of the most reputable astrophysics journals to publish in as an academic? Here are some of the most reputable journals in the field of astrophysics for academic publishing. Top journals in astrophysics one, the Astrophysical Journal, APJ, Correct. published by the American Astronomical Society. This journal covers significant new research in astronomy and astrophysics, including theoretical insights and observational results. Two, monthly notices of the Royal MNRS, Astronomical Society, yeah. MNRIS, this journal is well regarded for its comprehensive coverage of astronomy and astrophysics research. It is published by Oxford University Press and has a high impact factor. Okay, so that that's a lot. Um, I didn't need to get the whole list, but I, it got it got the big ones correct. Uh, are these things in my library? Um, what's some of the most reputable? Oh, okay, here we go. So it did actually have the response here. So it definitely took a long time to get through this list because it was kind of a slow reader. I did ask it to do that though, so pretty good, pretty good. And these are all correct. These are all these are all fantastic journals to publish in here. What is this spaces thing here? Organize your threads and collaborate with others on a journey of discovery, create a space. Okay, so I, I work alone. <laughs> I'm like Batman here. What is this math one? I wanna try the math here. What does this math thing do? Um, integrate the function natural log of x dx. That's always a good test question. I don't know why, I just like integrating this function because it has to do integration by parts. So, oh, and usable from alpha. Okay, so it just did that. Okay, uh, fair enough. What happens if I just click well from alpha here? Does it just show me that it, it did it? Oh, it did, okay, cool. So it just used the result from well from alpha to tell me what was, what was the answer. Ooh, there's an introduction to complex analysis. That's fun, that's like my favorite course in math that I took as an undergrad. That's beside the point though. So, okay, good job, perplexity there. Can I ask it maybe something like, what is the 100th number in the Fibonacci sequence? The 100th number is, oh my, that's a huge number. Okay, so what was the source? Is there a source for this? Hello, do we have a source? Oh, I guess maybe this is like a table of Fibonacci numbers perhaps. What happens if I change my LLM? I'm just curious. How, how good or bad do my results get if I change it from Claude to, I don't know, why don't we go with Grok2 from XAI? Because why not? Why not? Okay, how do you calculate it? Oh, okay, the Fibonacci can be calculated manually by these following steps. Mm-hmm. 
efficient calculation methods, the computer programs, matrix exponentiation method, Binet's formula, dynamic programming approaches. All right, so what happens if I click on these links? What do they take me to? Calculate Fibonacci sequence annually. Oh, is it because I asked it to do math when I was choosing its settings? That's that's why it's uh, it's making me do this. So it's searching all of this on Wolfram Alpha. Oh, huh. okay, interesting. Okay, so I, I have not uh, perhaps figured out the perfect use cases for these. Uh, what is social? Okay, I'm gonna tell it to make a title for this video. So make a catchy YouTube title about me using perplexity AI for the first time. I'll just say here pro version, pro version. All right, will this help me? I have no idea. Searching Reddit, why are you searching Reddit? I want you to be creative here. First impressions, using Perplexity AI Pro, a game changer. This title is engaging, highlights novelty of your experience and suggests a transformative impact, which can entice viewers to click out of curiosity about how AI can change their game. Eh, I'm not so sure actually how I like that. Uh, let's see, what are some creative ways to showcase my first experience with Perplexity AI Pro? Okay, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> We're doing it, it's so meta. We're like doing it in the video here. Creative ways, interactive storytelling. Utilize features like interactive labels or touch screens to create a narrative around your experience with Perplexity AI, uh, okay. AI-driven titles and descriptions, personalized video ideas, AI as a virtual tutor, real-time feedback on writing. Uh, doesn't seem like the best ways to demonstrate it personally. Simulation of historical conversations. Ooh, that sounds kind of fun, okay. Uh, what's like a historical conversation? <gasps> okay, okay, I got it, I got it here. Write a fictional conversation between Einstein on his death, his deathbed and the nurse who famously didn't understand his last words. In this fictional scenario, the nurse understands German and can translate what Einstein said before dying. Okay, let's try this again. Ooh, in a small, warmly lit hospital room in Princeton, New Jersey, Albert Einstein lay on his deathbed. The room was quiet except for the soft beeping of medical equipment and the occasional distant sound of footsteps in the hall. A nurse named Mary entered the room to check on him. She was known for her gentle demeanor and kind smile, which had brought comfort to many patients over the years. Unlike many, Mary had spent her childhood in Germany and was fluent in German, a fact not widely known in the hospital. Let's just skip ahead here. You can read, you can pause and read if you want to, but I just wanna skip ahead here. The equation, what would you say is the most important equation in life then? The equation of love, Mary. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. It's what binds us, what drives us to understand, to create, to be better. Do they watch Interstellar or something? <laughs> That's beautiful, Mr. Einstein. Thank you, Mary, for this conversation. It's a fitting end, isn't it, to speak in my mother tongue, to share a moment of understanding with someone who has cared for me in my final days. It's been an honor, sir. And now, I will rest. Oh, dang. What a poetic ending. Definitely not how that went down in reality, but we can we can imagine, and uh, perplexity can help us imagine. So that was, that was pretty cool to see it display its creative writing process there. Okay, so I'm going to the website now because I couldn't find a way to do image generation on the uh, desktop app. So I guess we can try image generation with Playground V3. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Can I ask it to generate something? Oh, here we go. Solve equations, find numerical answers, discover and watch videos, generate text or chat. How do I generate images? Our image generation feature, our once published famous image, look for generation on the right side of the interface. Bring, click it to bring your ideas to life. Oh, okay. Generate an image of a spaceship flying close to a black hole. Okay. No, no NASA. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Generate image. That's what I wanted. Generate image. Ooh. Um, hmm. Illustration, let's see what an illustration looks like. Ooh, whoa, that looks really cool. Let's open this in a new tab. Whoa, look at that thing. 
Look at that thing. That's a weird looking spaceship though. Those, those, this looks kind of like the spaceship from like Dragon Ball Z. You know those things when the Saiyans come. This is really pretty and striking. What have I not tried yet? I don't think I've tried the attach feature. So I've attached a research paper of mine. This is I think one of the last things I haven't tried to do with it yet. So let me just see if it can summarize the results of this paper PDF I have attached. Okay, let's see what it does. And we wait. Lots of waiting. There's always a lot of waiting involved with this. And let's see here. Two dynamical measurements. This is correct, though the formatting is a little funny. And just by glancing at the sentences, that is correct, because this is my paper. How about this? What, how does the paper contribute to its field? Okay, yeah, how does, it, how does my paper contribute to the field in general? Okay, let's see here several important contributions to the field of quantum error correction and entanglement theory? What? Wait a minute. Is this a completely different prompt or what's going on here? This is not correct at all. Um, <laughs> I was giving it so much dab. I was like, yeah, you're doing a great job here, but my paper has absolutely nothing to do with quantum error correction, which does sound really cool, but Unfortunately, that's not what the that my code does. So, so I think that's a very interesting note to end on uh, on this video for perplexity.ai. I'm sorry if the video was, maybe was not that exciting. I had never used it before, so I was mostly just clueless, clicking around and trying new features. But I think this is a very interesting final thing I've noticed here, how it somehow connected my paper on black holes to quantum error correction and entanglement theory. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So look out for that, I suppose. But besides that, I would say I generally liked using perplexity in terms of its honesty, in terms of if it didn't know the exact answer to something, it wouldn't just make something up for the most part. Um, and would just tell me that and say that you should search for these things instead. I don't know if I would use it that much. Like I don't find it perhaps as intuitive yet as Google, but I've been using Google for my whole life basically. And so perhaps I should go easy on perplexity with any of these LLMs, I think trust but verify is the way to go with emphasis on the verify and maybe a little bit less on the trust. But uh, nevertheless, I hope this video was insightful. If you were cur curious about perplexity and uh, you thought about getting it, I hope this was a decent enough demonstration of what it's capable of. And uh, I hope to see you all in a future video and that we can test more AI models together. See you next time.